Welcome to the rundown from Down Under. My name is Buddy Pulley. We're covering Shane Van Gisbergen's doubleheader weekend this past weekend at Talladega. Um, it was maybe not the showing we wanted, at least out of the Xfinity series, uh, but a pretty decent run in the Cup Series race. And I think overall, if you're asking me, the whole weekend, he impressed. Um, obviously a 35th place finish in the Xfinity race. Um, getting into that, um, I thought overall, Shane ran a very good race and he ran a very smart race. And, you know, one of the, the a super speedway race happened. Um, he, he was very, he clearly had a very fast race car. Um, the college teammates worked pretty well together. You saw Shane and Josh Williams working well. Um, they worked their way all the way up to, uh, challenging for top five spot there at one point. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, he just, you know, Daytona, he made some mistakes. He got caught up in a couple incidents. Um, Talladega in the spring, he ran a very good race. And then, you know, Atlanta is its own animal. I, you know, um, and then um, Daytona, he got caught up in a wreck, which is just what you do. This race, though, this is... I mean, we've been saying it, you know, we knew Shane was going to be able to turn up the aggression, but to the degree that he turned it up and to the execution of um, the race, he did a really good job, in my opinion. Um, obviously, what ended up taking him out of the race, he did make a mis did ultimately make a minor mistake. Um, it could be, I mean, you could put it on the spotter, you could put it on Shane. Um, it, it's kind of a little bit 50-50, ultimately what happened. Shane coming off turn four, he um, he tried to cut in front of Dean Thompson in the 26 car. Um, he wasn't quite clear. And to give you all a perspective, that is coming off of four. The spotters are at the other dog leg in the triangle. And from what I under, I either they're either in the triangle or in the other dog. Like either way, the view off of Ford that is notorious for being the worst view for the spotters. And a lot of times you'll you'll hear uh, maybe if you listen to Door Bumper Clear or just any any broadcast, they'll, they'll tell you a lot of times you know you're kind of on your own coming off a of turn four. The spotters they can only do so much just because of the angle that they're. They're coming at you, right? So Shane tries to cut in front of Dean Thompson, wasn't clear, makes a really good save and and does and does something really smart. He stayed below the yellow line until he caught it and he was gonna safely blend back up into the pack. It was gonna be a, a really a non a non incident there. I mean he was he was gonna blend back up into the pack and he probably would have you know he had a fast enough car, he would have worked his way back up through there. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. Um, Jordan Anderson in the 32 car, um, I guess, didn't see the near wreck that was happening right in front of his eyes and decided that he was going to absolutely ass pack the back of Dean Thompson and um, ended up spinning him out, who, you know, in, inadvertently into Shane Van Gisbergen and turned Shane back up into the track and it caused a whole big crash. Which is what took Shane out of the race. Um, it really sucks because, like I said, he had, he had a fast car. I thought he did. I thought he did a really good job. Um, I thought he was doing a good job of keeping his nose clean and being cautiously aggressive, um, and, which is really the 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 best play at at these super speedways. But. Um, he did have a little bit of luck go his way um, in an Xfinity race. Um, Sammy Smith did win, which that was a worst case scenario basically for Shane for him to crash out and then the guy 12th in points win the race. That, I mean, that Shane went from being either above the cut line if he could finish the race or, you know, a little bit below if Sammy Smith doesn't win. I think it would have been maybe like six below if Sammy Smith don't win to. 21 back at the end of the day. Um, so that that was unfortunate, but like I said, he did get a bit of luck. Sam Mayer got disqualified, and I think he he went from 13 above the cut line to now he's um, 
I'm sorry, I don't know how much he was above the cut line, but he went to 13 below the cut line. Uh, he got, like I said, got disqualified because of heights. Um, so that relegates him from whatever finishing position he was in back to last. Almost like he didn't show up. Um, so that definitely helped Shane. Shane was going to be 21 points back of the cut line going into the Roval. Uh, but now he is going to be only 10 points back. So that's good. Um, so before we get into the cup race, let, let's actually take a look at the Xfinity Series playoff standings heading into the Charlotte Roval. Sammy Smith, with his win at Talladega, catapults from 12th all the way to the top of the playoff standings. He advances to the round of eight. Joining him in the round of eight is Chandler Smith. He exited Talladega plus 64, which is enough points to advance. Cole Custer and Austin Hill, third and fourth in points, both 37 points above the cut line. Sheldon Creed is fifth plus 32. Jesse Lovis, sixth plus 22. Riley Herbson, seventh plus 20. AJ Allmendinger, the four-time Charlotte Roval winner in the Xfinity Series, sits on the playoff bubble, only plus seven above the cut line. Justin Allgaier, the first car out in ninth, he is minus seven. SVG heading into another road course is only minus 10 hoping for big things out of the Giz going into the Roval. Sam Mayer, minus 13 after his disqualification at Talladega. He's the defending winner in the, at the Charlotte Roval in the Xfinity Series. And Parker Kligerman sits shotgun on the playoff grid. He is only minus 16. So as you see there, Shane is only minus 10 below the playoff cut line. Um, that makes me feel a lot better. Minus 21, I was kind of expecting him to at least need to somehow score stage points um, and hope there's some trouble or just go out and flat win the race. Being point minus 10, um, I think that's an easy get as long as he has a clean day, obviously. Um, I believe I, if I... I'm no expert and this gets confusing with the stages and uh, on these road courses because it's very hard to win the stages and also win the race. Um, I believe Shane did that at Portland, if I'm not mistaken. He won stage one and then won the race. Um, so I think if he is going to go after stage points, it's going to be in stage one, flip it. He's going to need track position and then probably he's going to, or he's going to need to flip stage two in order to get track position for stage three and then go try to win the race. Um, I, I th honestly, I mean, as long as they can bring a solid car there, um, I, I think Shane's going to be going to be pretty stout. Um, he actually has laps at the Roval, not on this configuration, but the old configuration. Actually, his first time in a cup car was on the old configuration of the Roval. So there is some, I believe there is something to transfer from there. But maybe even more um, more helpful for him, he's got AJ Allmendinger who um, has won the Roval four times in Xfinity and once in Cup as his teammate. They obviously have a great handle on the Roval over there at College Racing, so I would imagine that Shane is going to have a pretty nice piece going into Charlotte. The Cup race, um, he had a. He had a solid day, dude. I mean, he finished 15th. He led laps. He actually set the fastest lap in next-gen history at 199. I think five six miles per hour. Um, yeah, I mean, same as the Xfinity race. I, I felt like he he was able to be aggressive, which uh, we saw that out of him in the Cup race. Obviously, he he led at least a lap in the Spring Cup race, and he was he was trying to make moves and. You know, he said before the race that, you know, he's not in the play he's not in the playoffs and cup. He's there to win the race. And he definitely was um was making plays like that's what he was trying to do, which obviously that's you don't show up to the race without wanting to win. But I mean, you know, you would think a first year rookie, which Shane's not he's not he's not the ordinary rookie, right? They would go to Talladega and they would, you know, a lot of times if they end up in a position to win. They, you know, they either fail or they're timid to make moves. Shane, I mean, obviously he ended up 15th. Not any, not anything to ride home about if you don't look too far into it, but he just, he ran a very solid race. And I think he, I think ultimately what he did do is he earned respect from 
a lot of the competitors out there because I mean this is completely foreign from for Shane. I mean he comes from I'm not telling anybody any new information. He comes from road courses, right? But this this super speedway racing is unlike anything. And you know people people say oh anybody can win you know whatever. There's a nuance to it. If it still takes it. It still takes a level of mental fortitude in order to, one, stay concentrated in the pack, and two, be able to make the right moves and know what the right moves are to be made in that moment. Um, especially in this day and age in the Cup Series um, plate racing, it's extremely hard to move forward because, you know, you have guys saving gas and, you know, you're kind of in gridlock in that four wide situation. Um, and then when they're two by two, I mean, there's so much drag on these cars, it's hard to pull out a line and make moves. But, you know, overall, Shane just drove a really good race, and I was really proud of him. And like I said, I think he gained some respect from the guys that, hey, you know, I may be, you know, this may be new to me, but I, I'm not too shabby at it, uh, which should play dividends going into the, his first Daytona 500 next year. Um Really, that's all I had for the cup race. Uh, just the, I thought it was a very solid performance from Shane. Going into the Charlotte Roval, um, the Xfinity Series, we just broke that down. We didn't know this until Monday. Yeah, Monday. Uh, but Shane is running the cup race at the Charlotte Roval. I don't think this was in the cards. I think this is kind of a last-minute play. I almost want to think that it was the decision was made after his run at Watkins Glen, almost winning, obviously. Um I talked to obviously my buddy Jeremy Taylor, who works at Colleague. I said, you know, when did when was this decision made? And he's like, I have no clue. I didn't know about it until he walked in the shop Monday morning, and there was a WeatherTech 13 car sitting on the floor. So um, he, uh, you know, Shane, I think, I think he could win. I think he can win both races. I think. People underestimate how technically difficult the Charlotte Roval is and how much that plays into road course specialist hands. I mean, obviously, you've seen A.J. Allmendinger. He's won a Roval race five straight years, four times in Xfinity and last year in Cup. So, you know, that that will help Shane, too, because, I mean, that 13 car has taken a step up this year. Last year, it was not a very stout car, in my opinion. 13 cars definitely take a step up. We saw AJ have a decent run in Chicago, and he was had a decent run at Watkins Glen. Also, you know, he was very fast at Talladega, which doesn't transfer, but why leave it out? Um, <laughs> but uh, he's going to be, like I said, he's going to be in the 13, so um, one, adjust your eyes to that, but he's going to be in the same paint scheme, so I guess that doesn't matter. But uh, I, like I said, I think with how technical the Roval is, it is a very proper road course as you know wonky as it is being an oval and a road course and you know you got the banking and everything it's still it is a very technical course i don't like the new turn seven that they've put in um it used to be a sweeping uh that sweeping turn used to cut in and you would make a sweep another sweeping right hander back onto the banking now it's a hairpin which i think is solely um, in an effort to create Coda style die bombs. Um, so that's not fun. Um, but, uh, well, you know, that's why we run the race, I guess. Um, I will be at the Charlotte Roval, uh, both days. Seth and I will both be there. Um, and we sit front row by the start finish line at Charlotte. So we will have my Shane Van Ginsburg and flag. We'll be flying that. So please let me know down in the comments of the Roval episode. If you uh, if you happen to see us there, um, we're gonna we're gonna try to make it known, and uh, you know I think uh, I think the goal I think we're gonna go try to catch some rugby balls. That's all. I'll leave it at that. Um, really, that's all I have uh, for this week. Uh, we'll see you after the Charlotte Roval. Make sure you listen to this week's edition of the Big Motor Small Blade Podcast. We broke down. Obviously, everything Talladega with the DBP clock, Ricky Stenhouse winning, the biggest crash in Cup Series history. And then uh, we talked a lot about uh, the the lawsuit that is going on between NASCAR and 2311, Michael Jordan, and uh, Front Row Motorsports. So definitely take a look at the uh, this week's episode of the show. But yeah, 
with that, see you next week. <laughs>